with you today, guys? Well, it's Five Fast Friday again, and I got it right that time. Five Fast, not Fast Five. Fast Five is a very poor movie. Yeah. At any rate, we're going to talk about five fast pieces of EDC gear that I think every outdoorsman should have. Now, it's going to be shorter titled because, well, it takes up a lot of space on YouTube, and it makes it harder for you to read the entire title that way. But these are five fast pieces of gear I think every outdoorsman should have. So without any further ado, here comes a little bit of music. in the country I was in the military and I wound up at a kind of a unique unit where we spent a lot of time in campsites and things like that and I had to learn how to do a lot of things that were outside of what most Navy guys would learn but even before that I grew up in the country and there was a lot of times I would spend days at a time out in the woods and my father and I would go camping and I spent a lot of time out and about and there were areas where I grew up where you could easily get lost and stay that way for days if you didn't know the terrain and didn't know the area so um, just a little plug for a friend of mine back here this is the logo for ready man network Jeff Kirkham Jeff Kirkham is an incredible person who has done a lot to help me out and I just wanted to throw this up there so go check out their website they have a lot of stuff that they do uh, ready man Gear Ready Man Network, they have a lot of stuff. And I mean, basically what he does is he just tries to help everyone stay a little bit more prepared. So let's not make this take too long. I have five pieces of gear that I recommend everyone have if they're gonna be outdoors. This isn't like, this isn't everyday EDC stuff for uh, like, like where I'm at now in San Diego. Uh, I, I don't need a lot of these things, but if I go camping, I would take these things. So. Like I said, five pieces of gear that I think everyone needs if they're an outdoorsman. So let's take a look at it from above. Hey guys, well, first of all, being my channel, you can see that a knife is my first pick, but not this. You want something like this, an outdoor EDC knife like the Bark River uh, EDC 2. Having a knife that is capable of doing bush craft and camp tasks in a campsite setting is extremely important. If you don't have a knife, you can't make tent post pegs, you can't make, uh, you know, tent stakes, you can't cut down feather sticks and things like this. Bark River knives make some of the best outdoor knives anywhere on the planet. They are meant specifically for bushcraft, things like this. Um, you could baton this, split down wood with this if you needed to. It is an, an incredibly robust and versatile tool in the bush. A folding knife will not get you where you're going. There are some exceptions, of course. Cold Steel has made a couple of very, very good folding knives that would fit the camp task, but a fixed blade is what you're going to want. A larger blade, a broader blade, a good steel, and something that will take the tasks. You can pound this through a piece of wood if you need to. You can cut down a feather stick. It stays nice and sharp. And the fact is you don't have to worry about it coming apart. You don't have to worry about stuff getting in the bearings. You don't have to worry about the pivot breaking because it's one solid piece of steel. You want something that's comfortable. If you're having to do a lot of tasks, you want something that fits your hand comfortably. So go find yourself a good fixed blade with a good sheath. This is great because you can carry it scout carry. You can carry it vertically at different heights. You can just simply lash it to your bag. Um, the whole point of being able to do multiple things with one tool is the epitome of being an outdoorsman. So a good solid bushcraft or outdoors knife will get you where you're going. So number one, in my opinion, the first and most important item is a good outdoor knife. The second most important, and I know I'm going in ascending orders, most important to least important this time, which is kind of backwards the way I usually do it. That would be descending order from most important to least important. Just thought I'd let you know. But 
That's how we're doing it. The second most important item that you're going to have with you in the woods is some fashion, form of fashion of making fire. In the wilderness, fire equals survival. If you get wet and cold, you lose energy. You need to be able to dry clothes. You need to be able to cook. Fire is incredibly important to surviving. These are ferro rods. Uh, you can take kindling out in the woods with you. You can find kindling. You can make some, find some dry kindling, and you can use these to strike a fire. They come with a striker. These ones are from Fiber Light. My friend Justin, you guys know, has provided these to me. These are great. Now, if this is a little bit big and bulky, there are some options. Justin has a uh, a smaller version of that, which is the same diameter ferrule rod with a striker on a necklace, and this one has a whistle. A whistle is another good thing to have, and if it's incorporated in here, you can use this to signal, you can get people's attention. The shrill, piercing sound of a whistle will travel much further than a yell or a scream. So another good item to have, and the fact that they're incorporated together in this is awesome. Being able to light a fire in the woods if you need it is the most important thing technically but a lot of times you're going to need this to get to where this is going to be effective. So that's why this is the most important. Without this, you're going to have a hard time using this to make a fire. So, like I said, a good ferrule rod with a good striker and possibly a signal whistle as part of it. This one is a necklace you can wear around your neck. I actually have started fires with this. It works incredibly well. And you, you've got everything you need right there. So, having fire. Fire stick, real important. Or, you know, matches, a lighter. There's all kinds of things you can take into the wilderness with you that you can use to start a fire. Next item on the list is a compass. A good compass will get you where you're going. If you don't know how to get back from where you're at or get to where you're going, you're going to have a problem. This is an old Silva Polaris. My father got this for me when I was, I want to say 15-ish. Um, this is a good one. Uh, if you're using a map, you have a scale, you can measure out distances and things like that to your scale. So you can figure point A to point B. You can set your, you can set this on the map and set you, there's a lot of metal and magnets around here. So this is not pointing true, but you can figure your, you can figure your bearing and things like that on your map. So having a compass is great because if you can't figure out which way you need to, I mean, if you don't know where you're at and you don't know which direction is which, and you're looking at a map, how are you ever gonna use a map if you don't have a compass? So, compass, incredibly important. Get a good one. Uh, don't just get a crappy cheap one. Like I said, I have had this for the better part of 20, probably 20 plus years now, 22, 23 years. Actually, no longer than that, 30 plus years. I've taken care of it. It has a little case that it goes in, it sits in. Um, it's a liquid filled. It works pretty well. All kinds of different compasses you can get. Sometimes it's as simple as if you look here, sometimes our tech helps us out. We have a compass right here on our phone that tells us our bearing, our incline, our elevation, and things like that. If you have one of these and you can charge it in the wilderness, it is a viable option. This offers you some things. So there you go. A good compass. Essential to being in the, in the woods. The next couple items are not necessarily things that you have to have, but a good flashlight. A good flashlight is always a good option for something to have while you're out and about in the woods because if it gets dark, you want to be able to find your way back. This flashlight is a little bit big and bulky, but it does have a pouch that you can carry, you know, you can carry it in your uh, on your belt if you need to, things like that. This flashlight has a much longer battery life than this one. It also has higher lumens and in a pinch, I have tested it, you can start a fire with this light. Problem is, this flashlight, once it's dead, it's dead unless you have something like a battery backup that you carry in your pouch um, and your kit, but that's heavy. This smaller one might be a better option. It comes with its own charging case, kind of like the AirPods. Um, and this one, almost as bright as this one, has the same settings and it's a little bit easier to carry. This, these, both of these are great flashlights. I cannot recommend the Olight brand enough. This one has a battery, battery indicator. It tells you your battery life. It's magnetically chargeable. This one has a second button on the back as well. But if you just need a light 
to go and get around and about things in a campsite, this would work. Plus, you can clip this to the bill of a ball cap and have a headlamp. So magnetically charged, like I said, if you take the cord and a battery backup, or you can just take the, the small little uh, drop-in charger case to, uh, to charge this up to three times when you're out in the woods. Battery life on this is pretty good. It's a good flashlight. A good light can come in very handy out in the woods. So there you go. Flashlight. Don't forget, guys, I have an affiliate link for Olight where you could pick these up. And the last item is not something you have to have. Uh, this, not this particular type. This is a paracord bracelet. This is one continuous piece of paracord from tip to end. There's actually another piece of paracord inside. So technically you have two pieces of paracord. It is nice to have things that you can lash things down with, stuff like that, out in the woods. So having some line, either carrying a spool of line or a small bag of paracord is great. But if you're going minimalist, this gives you, I forget, I think this is, I forget how much paracord is in this bracelet, uh, but it just basically gives you an option where you can carry that in an easy fashion. You just put it on your wrist and then you have ready to go paracord. It's always nice to be able to tie something down, especially if you're doing a lean to with say a poncho and you're just building yourself a little lean to as a windbreak. Um, and building a fire in front of it because maybe you're just out for the day and you just need to block a little bit of wind or say it's raining and you just want to do a lean-to with your poncho. It does come in handy to have a piece of line that you can lay that poncho across and some more line to lash it down so the wind doesn't blow it away. So not necessarily an essential item, but it definitely is something I recommend having in the woods. Uh, there's other things you can do this paracord. You can actually use it as a saw to, you can cut paracord with paracord. You can cut other line with paracord. In a pinch, this will cut and generate enough friction. You can cut through some small limbs if you need to. But with something like that, there's other items you can take. If you really need something like that, get a small folding saw or a uh, wire saw. There are wire saws, cable saws that you can take. So there you go. That is my last recommendation. Some sort of cord for lashing. Paracord works really good. 550 foot or 550 pounds strength before it, it parts. So like, I don't think you really have to worry about breaking paracord in a campsite setting. And these bracelets are handy. So there you go, guys. That was five items that I recommend for the outdoorsman as EDC items. Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. Like I said, guys, that's five quick pieces of gear and kit that you should have on you if you're going out in the woods. And like I said, there are a couple of these items that I carry on a daily basis. I do carry a knife. I do carry a flashlight. Um, I have been known to carry a multi-tool, which we didn't bring up here, but I'll let you guys know. Multi-tool is another good piece of gear uh, in case you are, are setting up a camp and you need to be able to tighten a fitting on a tent or something like that. So there you go, guys. That's it. Uh, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. It helps me. It absolutely does help me rein in and tighten in what content you guys do and don't like and helps me make changes. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, it's as simple as like I always say, just share the channel with people you think would enjoy it. But if you do want to support the channel financially, here come three real quick ways. Uh, down below, I have a membership tab gets you in on early access to videos, exclusive content, and a sharpening tutorial for the premium tier members. Just make sure you're in a tier that gets you the benefits you want. I have affiliate links for all kinds of stuff down below. Anything you purchase once you're through, I get credit for it. Amazon does not charge you extra days. Give me a little bit of money. And I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. So there's a link to both. Uh, and I have a coupon code that works on Ember Shirt Co. and my merch store that saves you 10% at checkout. It's crazy sharp, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp, all one word. And please go check out my newest affiliate, Atlas VPN, they're the one I'm using. I'm able to watch stuff from all over the world because I can just set my network and you're allowed unlimited devices. So guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. It makes it so much easier to moderate. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.